Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another weekend prep video. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Jen. I'm a full-time working mom. I have two kids and in these types of videos, I just like to share with you what I get done on the weekend to prepare for the upcoming work week. We have nowhere to be this weekend, so I'm hoping for a super productive weekend around home. It's actually about noon on Saturday right now and I got up around 8.30 this morning and I made some breakfast, so we're gonna cut to that. I made um, bacon and eggs and toast for Adam and then I also made some uh, gluten-free chocolate chip muffins for the kids. All right, so we're gonna go back in time for a little bit and I'll share with you guys uh, what I cooked this morning. So I have some thick cut bacon. I got this at Costco. I just laid it out on a cooking rack on a baking sheet that was lined with foil that makes for a lot easier cleanup. And I like to roast this in the oven, usually at 425 for about 20 minutes. I'm also going to make a pot of coffee. I have this dual coffee maker. It's a Hamilton Beach. You can either make a pot uh, or a carafe or you can also do a K-cup. Usually during the week we use cups but on the weekend when we're both drinking coffee I usually make a whole pot next while the bacon's in the oven I'm gonna go ahead and cook up some eggs here's what that bacon looks like when it came out of the oven it is so crispy and delicious and it is a lot less mess than frying it on top of your stove you have no splatters to clean up so here was Adam's plate I just gave him some bacon eggs and one piece of whole wheat toast and then I have my coffee there and my Ray Dunn <laughs> boss lady mug I think I picked that up at TJ Maxx so here's that muffin mix this is the Jessica has gluten-free muffin mix. Um, they sent this to me a while back and I've had it sitting in my pantry and just hadn't used it yet. So I am mixing up the wet ingredients in a bowl here, just some milk and some eggs and some vanilla, a little bit of canola oil, and then I'll add the mix. So this mix is just plain. You can add whatever mix-ins that you want. I was gonna add blueberries. My kids are not huge fans of blueberry muffins. They will eat raw blueberries all day long, but they don't like the cooked ones <laughs> in the muffins. So I just add a couple handfuls of the Lily's sugar-free chocolate chips. We like those a lot and they just give a little bit of sweetness without all of that added sugar. So I'm scooping the muffin batter into the tin. I have some Paw Patrol muffin liners, which my son has outgrown, but we're still gonna use those up. Here's what they looked like when they came out of the oven. And then I stored these for uh, snacks during the week as well. Okay, so what I'm gonna work on right now is my laundry. I have about four <laughs> loads of laundry to fold here. So I just have a cup of coffee. I'm going to uh, sip on that and probably watch some YouTube or something on my phone or listen to a podcast while I finish up this laundry. And then I'll probably go downstairs and make lunch. I was thinking I was gonna make some taquitos because I have some corn tortillas and some shredded chicken left over in the fridge. So we'll maybe try that. And then also I put in my grocery order this morning. So when that comes later, I'll share with you guys what I got. This week's weekend prep video is sponsored by Gabby so thank you to them for their support on my channel I am letting you guys know about this service because it can save you a ton of money on your car or your homeowners insurance most people are probably overpaying for home and auto insurance and a lot of people know that including myself but it's sort of a hassle to you know figure out how to find a better rate because the shopping experience sucks you have to go to multiple websites make lots of calls fill out forms but that is how Gabby can solve the problem is by comparing all of the insurance prices for you in one spot. Gabby is totally free to use and the average customer saves over $961 a year. 70% of people actually see savings on their home or auto insurance when they use Gabby. I was one of those people. I actually found a policy that will save us over $250 a year, which is very exciting. <laughs> Adam and I are both very excited about that. So make sure you guys check this out. You can find quotes for the exact same coverage that you have now just obviously less money which is always a good thing be sure to check out the description box below it's gabby.com slash jen to see how much money you can save on your home or auto insurance again that's gabby.com slash jen it's totally free to check your rate on their website there is absolutely no obligation and it just takes a few minutes to see how much you can save on your home or auto insurance Okay, so fast forward to lunchtime and I am making some taquitos. I had this leftover chicken 
from um, a couple of weeks ago. Actually, I thawed it out. It was in the freezer. I had made some chicken taco meat in the Instant Pot, and I also had some corn tortillas on hand in the refrigerator, and so I decided to roll these up, and then I crisped them up in a pan in a little bit of avocado oil, and they made the most delicious taquitos, and everyone loved them. The kids couldn't stop talking about how good they were. Here's what they looked like. When I took them out of the pan, I just sprinkled them with a little bit of salt, and then we dipped them in salsa and had some fruit on the side for lunch. All right, so it's later in the afternoon now. I was also gonna say, if the coloring seems off in this video, it's because I got a new camera and I don't know if I have the settings <laughs> set up right yet. Like, I would have liked to set them up the same as my old camera, but I can't turn on my old camera because when I dropped it, I bent the lens and now it won't turn on. So, woe is me. I feel like I kind of look kind of yellow, but um, what I was doing now is I put some sheets in the washer and then I got on my computer because I needed to post a video today. Anyway, I'm gonna go um, put the rest of this laundry away and decide what else I wanna do. Um, I, Kira needs to clean her room like really bad and she wants me to help her put those LED lights up that she got for Christmas, but I told her that we couldn't do it until she cleaned her room because it's like, I don't know, it's trash. It's a trash heap basically. <laughs> And I think I'm making chicken teriyaki and rice for dinner tonight. Okay, so I was gonna show you guys what I'm making for dinner tonight. It's this um, teriyaki chicken recipe out of the Instant Loss cookbook. Um, this is her older one. I think it's a few years old. And I decided to order her new one, which is Instant Loss on a budget. So I think I'm gonna try and plan some recipes out of this. This week, I can link both of these down below. I got them on Amazon, just like I do all of my cookbooks. And then I think she has a Facebook page also and a blog, um, but all of her recipes have been really good. So I'm gonna make this uh, in the Instant Pot. And then there's a brown rice recipe that has mixed veggies in it. So I think I'm gonna make that on the side, but I did get my um, grocery order. So it's not very much stuff. Let me just show you what I got. Okay, so I did get a package of these little little bottles of spring water. Um, these are what I'm putting in the kids lunches now instead of Capri Sun. I always thought that I was doing <laughs> okay by getting the Capri Sun or the Kool-Aid, but as I look at the sugar content now, it's like way too much. If you look at the amount of sugar that we're supposed to have, like added sugar that we're supposed to have in our diet every day, it's like around 25 grams. And some of those Capri Suns are like 17 grams of sugar in and of themselves. So they can have water. So I got these for that. Um, we've been drinking them here at home too, but I like these because they're small and they fit right in the lunchbox. Uh, Kira really likes these. They're the Olay Extreme Wellness Wraps. These are the spinach kind. They have several different kinds at our Hy-Vee. There's like a sun-dried tomato and basil. I was trying to think of the word. And then there's a spinach and then there's a wheat. But these are much better for you than the huge regular like Mission spinach tortillas. They have less calories, less carbs, all that good stuff and she seems to like them so I'm grabbing those for her. Uh, I saw, I don't remember where I saw this online or somewhere, where um, someone had used these uh, brown rice cake for like peanut butter and jelly as a quick snack so I decided to get some of these. Um, it's been a while since I bought rice cakes actually and these are just the plain ones so you can see here that they don't have any sugar in them or anything and yeah basically just puffed brown rice. I got some tomatoes because I am going to make caprese salad and I didn't quite have enough in the um, refrigerator, so I got those. I was also all out of half and half and that's what I use every day in my coffee, so I grabbed that. I got some regular tomatoes. These will just be for sandwiches. I thought maybe one night this week I would make BLTs. I'm not sure yet. I haven't fully developed my meal plan yet, but I'll do that later tonight. Um, I did get some cottage cheese. This is my favorite brand of cottage cheese. It's the AE Dairy uh, 4%. And then they had these Faye yogurts on sale for a dollar each. So I decided to grab a couple of these. I really like these for breakfast. I got one of the cherry and then one of the strawberry. These are the 5% uh, milk. And then I also got some green beans. There is a recipe I wanna make for like a Parmesan crusted chicken breast. And I thought we would have like green beans with almonds on the side. So this is actually a larger bag than I thought it would be, but they're fresh green beans. So I don't know if I, we'll use all these, but if I don't, 
I'll just freeze the rest. Um, it took me several tries to <laughs> find a bread that had like minimal added sugar, which I thought was kind of odd, but this is the cottage wheat bread. And this one has less than one gram of added sugar per slice. I actually wanna try, I, I downloaded a recipe for um, wheat bread and the bread maker. I actually might try that tonight or tomorrow, I'm not sure yet, but I grabbed that for sandwiches this week. Um, I saw this and it was kind of an impulse deal. So this is the uh, Buffalo Ranch pizza sauce. And it's basically, I think it's like a ranch slash um, like Frank's Red Hot, it doesn't have any sugar in it. And so I thought that maybe we would try this on a, like a whole wheat pizza crust or something. I'm not sure yet. I just saw it and I'd never seen it before and I thought it was interesting. So I got that. I grabbed a dozen eggs. I got some uh, spreadable butter. We like to use this for like toast or English muffins or something that, you know, it's, you don't want to use a whole stick of hard butter for. Um, I also got the Eggo Nutri-Grain waffles. I chose these because per two waffles, um, they only had two grams of added sugar and they're whole grain. So those are definitely better than the, the regular waffles or the chocolate chip waffles. And then I did get some of the Cracker Barrel um, cheese sticks. We always keep these in the fridge for snacks. I got some baby carrots because I have some hummus in the refrigerator that I want to use up. And then I got half a pound of just this um, Colby Jack cheese. This is just a slice from the deli and then some string cheese. So that's everything that I got. Just a small little grocery haul. I think I'm gonna start to make dinner. All right, so I've got my two pressure cookers out. I'm gonna make the chicken in one and the rice in the other. I was gonna make the baked brown rice that I sometimes make, but that takes too long. So I have an Instant Pot and then I also have an Alec Homes, which I don't think this one is available anymore. I was looking for it on Amazon earlier today and they sent this to me like a long, long time ago. But uh, one thing I was thinking about doing is a video on like brand name Instant Pot versus off-brand pressure cooker. So I don't know if that would be an interesting video or not. Personally, I always sway towards the original Instant Pot. I've had this one for almost four years and I love it. It works really well. So I'm going to put into here, um, have some brown rice and some veggie broth and some mixed veggies and then get the rice cooking and then I'll work on the chicken. Okay, so I've got two cups of veggie broth in here and I'm just using this better than bouillon base. I keep it in my refrigerator. So I'm gonna do one and a half cups of brown rice. And then this is to cook it on the multi-grain setting. I don't know if this, I'll have to see if this one has a multi-grain setting. Let's just get it evenly there for 28 minutes there we go okay so after the rice is done cooking we're going to stir in two cups of mixed veggies and some olive oil and salt and pepper and then in this instant pot i've got two well i've got a little over a pound of chicken breast i have two whole chicken breast and then some cut up chicken breast hopefully it'll be fine that's what i thought out on accident and then I'm gonna pour the sauces in here okay so in here I've got some coconut aminos and a little bit of honey so I'm gonna pour this in okay so I've got some garlic in there and then I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar okay and then I also grated some ginger in there so I'm just gonna kind of stir this around a little bit and then I'm gonna cook this on high pressure for 15 minutes. So I washed out my coffee um, jar, I guess, that I keep my loose coffee in today, and I'm gonna put this in it. I tried this uh, the last couple days, and it's really good. It is the Starbucks Spring Day Blend. So if you ever see that in your grocery store, I think it's new, you know, they come out with the seasonal varieties. <laughs> It's really good. Okay, so the teriyaki chicken recipe calls for some chopped pineapple, and I did go ahead and grab this from the store. I was gonna try and use canned, but I thought fresh would be better, and it only called for a cup, so bonus, uh, I got to use the rest for just keeping in the fridge during the week so that we could have fruit for lunches. That's one thing that I always try to do on the weekends is prep our produce and our food because I wanna make sure that I have good food on hand to be able to have lunches and fill my kids' lunch boxes during the week. So 
I'm just cutting the core out of that. And then about a cup, I cut into small pieces for the chicken teriyaki. Okay, so I forgot I had the edamame in the freezer. So I just heated up in the microwave and sprinkled some salt on it. It's really good. I got this at Hy-Vee, I think. Yum. Okay, so I'm gonna make these brownies. I got these at New Pioneer. They're the Keto Fudgy Brownie Mix with Jones. So in this bowl, I have half a stick of butter melted, two eggs, and some milk. All right, so this brownie mix smells super good. So I'm gonna put it into a eight by eight dish and then bake it at 350 for 30 minutes. Okay, so I took the big pieces of chicken out of the Instant Pot and there's the pineapple that I cut up. So I put two, or I'm sorry, one tablespoon of arrowroot powder in there to thicken it up. And then I'm gonna put the stir fry veggies in and the um, pineapple in and then I'm just gonna let this cook on the saute function until the veggies are hot. Okay, so here's the finished chicken teriyaki. So I guess the only question I have about this recipe is that it has you put the frozen veggies in at the end and then cook it for two minutes. Like that's not long enough to cook the veggies. So you're obviously gonna have to cook it for <laughs> longer than that. But I put the chicken back in I'm just gonna let that simmer for a bit. And then this is the brown rice with the vegetables in it. I seasoned it with salt and pepper and it's really good. Uh, one thing I would say about this Alec Holmes pressure cooker is the keep warm function on this sucks. Like it's not very warm at all. All right, so here's what our dinner turned out like. We had the chicken teriyaki with the brown veggie rice on the side. All right, so I just show you guys how these brownies turned out. Really, really good. I'm very, very impressed with this mix. And then we're gonna have it with this uh, Rebel peanut butter fudge ice cream. I've never had the Rebel brand before, but I saw it at my Walmart, so I decided to try it. And I'm just gonna put a little bit on top of there. Pretty good. No sugar. I don't think there's any sugar. No sugar. Yeah, no sugar. It probably does have sugar. It's sweet. It's artificial sweetener. Hey guys, good morning and happy Sunday. It is about 7.30 and I have uh, the kitchen to clean up tonight because I didn't do it last night. I actually took a shower and went to bed early, but it's fine because I got good sleep and now I can uh, tackle the day and we got a lot more snow. <sighs> We've been getting so much snow this year, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Not very, uh, I mean, we, we normally get snow, but I feel like we've been getting a lot more this year than we normally do. So anyway, right now I'm going to um, clean up the kitchen a little bit and then I'm going to make a recipe for uh, low carb biscuits and gravy. So we'll see how that turns out. I've never made it before. So here's the cookbook that I'm using for this recipe. I can link it down below. It's Southern Keto. So I'm going to make these drop biscuits, which use almond flour and then the sausage gravy recipe, except I'm not really following the sausage gravy recipe they actually want you to use cream in the sausage gravy and I don't know I just I feel like that's a little bit excessive like you're already making <laughs> gravy so I just use regular milk um, but for the biscuits these were super easy to throw together and I'll try to find this recipe online and link it down below but basically you just mix together the wet ingredients there's some egg in there some sour cream and then you stir in the dry so uh, almond flour and baking powder and salt and I think you could probably uh, you know season these up how you wanted you could definitely put some garlic and some cheddar in there and do like the copycat uh, red lobster biscuits but I was super impressed with how these baked up. I just dropped them onto a sheet tray that was lined with parchment paper and they got super brown on the top and the bottoms actually. Uh, like I said, I was impressed. Sometimes when you do keto or low carb baking, it doesn't always turn out right, but these definitely did. So I have a pound of breakfast sausage here and I'm just browning that up in my pan. Um, I did not end up draining this. There was not a lot of grease, but you want a little bit of grease to mix with the flour so that you can thicken up your gravy. Here are those biscuits when they came out. They do look really really good and then the sausage gravy again I just used milk and a little bit of flour to thicken that and that is Adam's plate I just gave him uh, one of those biscuits split in half with some sausage gravy and he liked it a lot so thoughts on the low carb biscuits and gravy pretty good obviously the biscuits made with almond flour don't taste <laughs> exactly like regular biscuits but it's really good so now, we also watched um, last night's SNL on Hulu. John Krasinski was on there, and it was pretty funny. So I'm gonna go out and help Adam shovel the sidewalk and the porch. Um, he's gonna do the driveway, and then I'm gonna come back in here and finish cleaning up the kitchen. All right, I have to say, I feel like I've been super unproductive today. I haven't talked to you very much, but uh, 
I did, you guys, I got my uh, my Chairman Sanders shirt. I got this from Reagan. You can link it down below. You probably know the iconic Bernie Sanders meme by now. But uh, anyway, Adam uh, installed my blinds up here, or they're actually like cellular shades. So very excited about that because now when I'm on uh, video calls for work, there won't be this like huge, you know, like ray of light coming in the window behind me. So Connor wants to watch the movie Spies in Disguise and we don't have it on DVD and I looked it up and it's not on Hulu or anything and to rent it on Amazon Prime it was like $20 and I'm like I'm not paying $20 to rent a movie like that's excessive so I found it at Redbox for like $3 <laughs> And I actually had enough points, so I got it for free. So I'm gonna go pick that up right now. I might get a coffee. Finally stopped snowing, but mostly what I've been doing is cleaning up the kitchen, just like loading the dishwasher, unloading the dishwasher, loading it again, uh, cleaning up the island. There were some things that I still had out from Sam's Club and stuff that I needed to get put away. So I think I'm gonna go grab the movie, grab a coffee, and then um, I've just been also working on getting all of my stuff finished up in QuickBooks because um, I will have to turn all of this stuff into my accountant for tax time, which I never ever look forward to, but such is life, right? So I think we're gonna go do that, pick a movie. And then I think I wanna get a little bit of meal prep done today. I have some produce that I want to get washed up, get cut up. I have a couple uh, meals that I wanna make for meal prep for Adam and I. And then tonight for dinner, I'm making another recipe out of the Instant Loss Cookbook, which is chicken spaghetti, it uses whole wheat spaghetti. Uh, the, ki <laughs> the kids were not, super excited about the chicken teriyaki last night. Like it was the first time I made that recipe. And so I think if I made it again, I would make it a little bit differently. I'd probably add less honey, even though there wasn't very much to begin with. The coconut aminos is kind of sweet. And I would probably put different veggies in it. Like the stir fry frozen mix is just like, meh. Like I'd probably use like fresh peppers and broccoli and that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it was good. I would probably make it again with modifications, but normally that's what I do is whenever I make a recipe for the first time, you know, out of a cookbook, I'll make it as directed and then if we don't, you know, if there's things I want to change, then I write that in the cookbook and then we'll change it for the next time. All right, so I'm back from getting Connor's movie. Got some coffee, got a uh, flat white with almond milk. So all it is is steamed almond milk and then three shots of espresso. So there's no sugar in there or anything. What I'm doing now is kind of just going through the fridge and seeing what I need to get cleaned up and prepped for the week. So I have this spinach left over that we didn't get eaten and I just kind of dumped it out on the counter here and I'm picking out any of the, I guess that one's okay. Kind of went through and tried to pick out any of the leaves that might have been like slimy or whatever. And then I'm gonna put this in with this bag that I keep in my freezer, which is just a bag full of, I think it's actually baby kale and spinach. I can't open it in there right now, but I keep this on hand. And then whenever I make a smoothie, I just throw a um, handful of it into there. So I'm gonna do that. I thought out some chicken for dinner. And then I also thought out a little bit of extra chicken for, I'm gonna make some baked chicken breasts which I made last weekend I think I shared it with you guys and I used the seasoning by noble Maid. I got this from thrive it's a dry buffalo seasoning it's really really good um, I just all I did was bake the chicken seasoned with this in like a 425 degree oven for like 15 minutes and then when it was cool I cut it into strips and we used that throughout the week I actually put it in Connor's lunchbox a couple days with ranch to dip it in and he thought that was very cool he loves buffalo chicken and then I have a couple of of green chef meals left over and I think what I want to do to keep from wasting those is to prep them for lunches this week because they're only two servings each so I might do that. I need to refill our veggie container because that's what we use throughout the week to um, pack the kids lunches and for salads and everything and then I got this Caesar salad kit at Costco last week and I'm gonna use part of this for dinner tonight and then the other part of it I'm gonna pack up into a couple um, smaller salads for Adam and I to eat during the week. And then I have some blueberries I need to wash up. I also have some strawberries up there that I need to wash up. And then I kind of just need to organize everything a little bit better. I made this hummus last weekend too, so it's still good, but I might kind of try and package it up a little bit better. The, the better I can have things like prepped <laughs> for the week, even if it's just like a little, you know, meal prep box or something like that, the easier it is for me to eat healthier during the week. And I ran to Walmart the other
other night and they had these on clearance. I just ran while, while Connor was at soccer and I think they supposedly expired, expired yesterday. But I'm gonna put these in the kids' lunches tomorrow. All it is is cheese, apples, and pretzels. So good clearance find there. I also need to go through the rest of this lettuce. I think it's still good, but I just wanna pick out any of the slimy parts. Okay, so here is my spinach. I'm just putting that into my big Ziploc bag with all of my other greens. Definitely try that if you have extra spinach or kale or anything else that's great to throw into a smoothie. Next, I'm going to uh, wash up some broccoli. So I'm just trimming the florets off of this into my salad spinner and then I'll give that a good wash. Here is the chicken that I thawed out. So I'm gonna be using part of this for dinner and then part of it for meal prep. For the chicken spaghetti that I'm making in the Instant Pot, I'm going to use four chicken breasts and then just cut those into bite-sized pieces. I think probably for this recipe, you could also leave them whole and then shred it up. It's just kind of your preference, but put the cubed chicken into the Instant Pot and sprinkle it with um, salt and garlic powder and pepper. And then I also am sauteing that in just a tablespoon of olive oil. The great thing about using the Instant Pot for these recipes is that it cuts down on the dirty dishes because everything cooks together in the pot. So after the chicken was cooked, I added my whole wheat spaghetti. I only used half a pound. The recipe called for a whole pound, but I bolt up the chicken and cut down on the pasta to cut down on carbs. And then I'm adding three cups of chicken broth and I'm going to set that uh, six minutes for high pressure. While that is cooking, I'm gonna take my other two chicken breasts and season them with this dry buffalo seasoning. It's really, really good. And I don't even use oil on that. This is chicken that we'll use during the week for salads and Connor always also likes to take it in his lunch box. So just sprinkling the buffalo seasoning on there and then I'll bake this in the oven. You could also do it in the air fryer. I was just thinking that, but um, I usually put this in the oven and bake it at 425 degrees, usually about 12 to 15 minutes. It really depends on how thick your chicken breast is and then you just let it cool completely before you slice it. So along with dinner, I'm gonna make part of this Caesar salad that I got at Costco. So I'm just putting part of it into a uh, sort of family size serving bowl, sprinkle it with the Parmesan cheese and the herbs. And then the other part I'm going to put into a salad container and that will be a prep for me for lunch during the week. So just kind of splitting this out that's a great way even if you're not working from home if you're still going into work or going into the office you can take these salad kits and portion them out and they make a great a, a great they make a great quick meal prep so i'm putting some of that caesar dressing in a small container this is actually a salad container from panera that i saved and i just like to wash it because i don't know i think i'm cool but <laughs> Uh, it makes eating salad more fun during the week and whatever we got to do to eat our salad, right? It is a little hard to close. I'm struggling with that. Okay, so again, going with some meal prep for what I had on hand in my refrigerator. I wanted to make some breakfast burritos because I had some sausage in the freezer, some hash browns in the freezer, and I've had these whole wheat tortillas that I wanted to use. And so I thought this would be a perfect prep for Adam for um, breakfast during the week. So here is my broccoli that I cut up. We're going to have that on the side of dinner also. So I'm just putting that in a steamer basket with some water in the bottom, and I'll steam that for about six minutes until the broccoli is tender. So so here's what that chicken spaghetti looks like when it's done cooking and then the only other thing that you add to it is a cup of sour cream I used regular sour cream but I think you could use light sour cream as well you could probably put some cheese in there if you wanted to I just followed the instructions and it came out perfect it's really like a healthier version of like chicken helper that's kind of what I thought of it as it doesn't have all those like nasty additives in it um, it was really good so here's the sausage that I chopped up I'm just putting that in to my skillet for the breakfast burritos with the uh, hash browns and I'll just give that a good mix and here's what that um, chicken spaghetti looked like after it sit for about five minutes this is definitely a crowd pleaser you can customize it with any veggies you want we had that with the broccoli and the Caesar salad on the side delicious dinner for sure okay so here are my scrambled eggs for the breakfast burritos so I'm gonna crack these into a bowl and then I'll just mix them up with some salt and pepper and some milk and give them a good whisk. And usually when I'm making breakfast burritos, I just like to kind of mix everything together in the same skillet. I don't always add potatoes to my breakfast burritos, but this, like I said, this weekend I did because I had like a half a package of hash browns left in the freezer. And I'm trying to go through my freezers and use up a lot of what I have because I need to uh, make some room in there and get some things used up. So I scrambled the eggs along with the uh, potatoes and the sausage and 
and then I also opted to fold some chopped jalapenos in there I just used the pickled jalapenos in the jar that we had in the refrigerator um, I usually like to either put a little bit of salsa or jalapenos or something spicy in them I just think that that makes it a lot better and then I had these large whole wheat flour tortillas that I got from the co-op a couple weeks ago and then again I'm using what I have this sliced up Colby Jack cheese kind of weird to put that in a burrito but again cheese is cheese and <laughs> just trying to use up the bits of what I had so I wrapped those up as tightly as I could these burritos are or the shells are perfect size for breakfast burritos because they are large enough to where you can wrap everything up together I wrapped those in parchment paper and here is what they look like you can store those either in the fridge or the freezer okay so I'm gonna meal prep a couple of green chef meals that I had on hand this is a shrimp scampi with spaghetti squash uh, it turned out pretty good and I am definitely not one for spaghetti squash but I think I might be converted after this method so I scooped the seeds out I seasoned it with some garlic herb seasoning some salt and pepper drizzled with olive oil and I'm just gonna roast that in the oven you know kind of face down for about 25 minutes until it is tender and once it's tender you'll see in a little bit that I'm able to kind of pull these strands out with a spoon here's my shrimp I just seasoned that and I'm going to saute it in a skillet with a little bit of olive oil next I am going to chop up some tomato that's also going to go in this shrimp scampi dish um, you know you guys know I have worked with Green Chef before in the past this particular video is not sponsored but again I do love their uh, meals I think that their keto boxes are great for meal prep they just come up with combinations that you probably wouldn't think of on your own so it's super fun to cook them I'm adding some chopped garlic and some chopped tomato in with my shrimp and I'll just make sure that is all cooked through next I'm adding this broth that came in the box it was like a lemon herb broth I think it was it was really good and then just giving that a simmer until everything is combined together next I'm going to work on the chicken dish this is a chicken tinga recipe and it came with some roasted veggies uh, you probably could put this on tortillas if you wanted to but we just ate it plain so I'm chopping up one yellow onion and sauteing that in a skillet along with the chicken I'm having a hard time getting that <laughs> off the paper towel but that's just chicken breast that came already cut up and I seasoned that with salt and pepper and I'm just going to saute that along with the onion until the chicken is mostly cooked through that kit came with the spiced tomato sauce so I'm going to squeeze that in and then I poured in about half a cup of water and I simmered this over about medium low heat until the chicken was cooked through and everything was uh, sort of combined together really good flavor in that um, sort of like a chicken tacos but it definitely ha is more saucy and it went really well with the veggies um, which I'll show you here in a minute so this is that chicken that I cooked up earlier it's cool now so I'm just slicing that into um, strips and then I store that in the refrigerator you guys have probably seen me do this before but it's really great for salads and um, like I said Connor likes it in his lunch he usually has it like with some carrots and cucumber um, to dip in some ranch dressing so I'm just gonna shut that container and I'll get that uh, into the fridge so for the chicken tinga recipe it also came with some veggies to saute up so I have one zucchini here I'm just going to cut that in half and then I'm cutting it into these smaller sort of half moon shapes the box the particular box that I had was two servings for each meal but these recipes do I think sometimes a lot of times they make quite a bit um, so sometimes if you buy even the four person box you can probably stretch it to like five or six people especially if you're uh, feeding kids once the zucchini is cut up I'm just going to get that back into the skillet with some olive oil and I did sort of wash and wipe that skillet out less dishes the better right and then I'm going to add in some shredded purple cabbage and this is already washed and cut so I don't have to do anything to it and while that is sauteing I'm going to cut up some tomatoes to add to that too so these are just cherry tomatoes and I'm just going to have them uh, you want to put those in at the end because they will sort of break down and make your dish uh, a little bit watery and I'll sort of hinder the rest of the veggies from cooking if you add them to too soon okay so here is that zucchini and cabbage sauteing in the skillet I'm adding the seasoning packet that came with this I think it was like an orange cumin seasoning really uh, unique and I added some salt and pepper to that and I am stirring that up well to make sure that the spices are coating all of the vegetables I really enjoyed um, meal prepping these dishes this weekend and I'm looking forward to eating them this week I think that the more fun that you can make meal prep and the more exciting
excited you are to eat your food, the better it is because it means that you have healthy food on hand. You don't have to worry about what you're going to eat during the week when you're super busy. And I don't know, I'm always like the meal prepping evangelist, you guys know, but here's that spaghetti squash. I let this cool until I can handle it. And you can see that I'm just scooping out those strands with a spoon. As long as you cook it until it's tender, it will easily uh, sort of come out like that. Adam tried it and he's like, huh, this is pretty good. I think I actually like it more than zoodles. I'm like, oh, well, that's good. Maybe I'll start making it now. So I put that into my skillet with the shrimp and I added a little bit of pesto and a little bit of Parmesan cheese. I also added a little bit of water just to loosen this up and I uh, tasted it and adjusted the seasoning, but definitely a unique dish, uh, super low carb shrimp scampi. And obviously you're getting tons of fresh veggies. Here is what I prepped. Here is the uh, shrimp scampi with toasted hazelnuts on top. And then here's that chicken tinga with the roasted veggies. I put some cotija cheese that came with it on top. And then with the chicken tinga, it also came with these um, little sauces of crema. So I put those in there as well. And there is our lunches for a couple days for the week for Adam and I. Super happy to have those done. So as I was going throughout my meal prep, obviously I had to clean up the kitchen. So I just went ahead and loaded the dishwasher. I get, sometimes I get comments, I get a lot of comments about my dishwasher. Sometimes I get comments that I, the people think I fill it too full. Um, I do try to rinse most of my dishes off before I put them in there. So it's not like I'm putting like big chunks of food or anything, but I personally am one that likes to challenge my dishwasher. And uh, the reason that I got a Bosch is because they had such good reviews and they really do do a great job at cleaning dishes. The dishwasher I had before in our old house before we moved was a KitchenAid and it was a nice dishwasher, but by the time we moved, it was probably almost 20 years old. And when I moved and got this dishwasher, I was like, oh wow, this is like what it's supposed to be like. Like it's actually supposed to <laughs> clean your dishes. And I've heard good things about KitchenAid uh, dishwashers too. I've heard the two best brands are usually KitchenAid or Bosch, but um, I definitely have no regrets going with this dishwasher. It has uh, been a workhorse for me. We're going on four years this year. I don't know how long dishwashers last now. I feel like I feel like they don't last as like stuff. I don't know. I feel like feel old saying this, but like appliances just don't last as long as they used to. You know, like I can remember when I was a kid, you know, we had a washer that was like 25 years old and now that kind of thing is like unheard of. You have to replace them all the time. Okay. I was not feeling having any dirty dishes in the sink tonight. So I went ahead and just hand washed everything because I wanted to get everything clean. Start out fresh with a new week. Clean kitchen is always great. So I am going to uh, just hand wash everything. I am still using the orange clove Mrs. Myers uh, scent. I just placed an order from Grove actually for some new scents that I haven't tried. So I'll share that with you guys um, when I get them in, but I do enjoy using the Mrs. Myers scents. Um, I think the funner and is that a word funner? Um, the more fun that you can make cleaning and the better it is for your senses, you, the more apt you are to do it. And I know it sounds silly to say like a cleaner is going to make you want to clean more, but it, I find that it really does. So I needed to scrub my sink out also because I was going to continue with meal prep and wash some veggies. So I just put some barkeeper's friend in there and I'm scrubbing that out with a sink scrubber and then just rinsing it out with super hot water. Um, I was actually out of the disposal cleaner that I normally use. So I didn't do that. I need to actually order some more. So now I'm going to get some of my fruit washed. I had these strawberries that I had picked up from uh, the grocery store and I'm just rinsing those in cold water with a splash of vinegar. I'll link my salad spinner down below. If you guys have watched my videos, you know all about all about the salad spinner, but I don't just use it for greens. I use it to wash all of my produce. And then I'm going to give my blueberries a wash and a good rinse as well. And no, the uh, fruit does not taste like vinegar. You just have to make sure that you rinse it off really well. I really like storing my cut fruit in these Rubbermaid produce keepers. I just think that they keep fruit fresher longer and veggies too. They have like a tray in the bottom that lets the water drain off so they don't get soggy, but strawberries are something my kids definitely love. And since I've been trying to cut out more processed foods, I'm definitely buying more <laughs> of them lately, but that's fine. And then I'm going to messily pour my blueberries into one of these containers. Also, I had to use two containers because I actually had some extra. So now I'm going to get started cutting up some veggies. We use these for salads throughout the week. We also use them in kids lunches. Um, we uh, sometimes also use them as a side for dinner. If I am out of inspiration and I just want to have veggies and dip on the side. That's what we have. So I had a couple of 
love English cucumbers. I got these at Costco in a three pack and I'm just slicing those and getting them into the container. Um, cucumbers I find when you slice them up, they'll last up to three days in the refrigerator, which is usually no problem because um, we normally eat them by then anyway. I also like to eat them with um, hummus. I had some homemade hummus in the fridge as well. So this is the Sistema container that I normally use for veggies. And then there is uh, my fruit washed and prepped as well, all done. Hey guys, good morning. It is Monday morning. It is uh, early and I'm getting ready to start my work day, but I thought I would close out this video and let you know what is on my uh, meal plan for this week because I did work on that. You guys saw I had just like a tiny little grocery haul just filling in some things that we needed for the week, but I was happy with what I got done yesterday. So I did a lot of um, meal prepping and obviously cleaning my produce and stuff in the kitchen, which is what um, always is my priority. Like, how do you guys prioritize what you want to get done on the weekend? I feel like my priority is always like meal and food prep and then cleaning. <laughs> like maybe sometimes I need to like reprioritize that. And I was actually looking, I had written a to-do list last week and I didn't really get a lot of it done. But again, a lot of it was stuff that I needed to sit at my desk and do. And sometimes I have a hard time doing that, like making myself do that. I'd rather be like up and around doing things. So, um, Kira did not get really get her room cleaned. She worked on it a little bit, but it's like, you know, when like preteens try to clean their room and it's just like kind of a half-assed job. So I need to work with her on that tonight when she gets home from school. Um, I did actually work on entering some of my receipts and working on some of my tax information from um, 2020 yesterday. I worked on my computer a little bit on that. Adam did get my shades put up, so hallelujah. I actually get questions semi-frequently on the shades in my house, so I ordered these. They're like custom cut from um, Menards. I can link the ones that I got down below. They're like a light gray color. These are the ones we have down in our living room too, and I really like the cellular shades because they still let a little bit of light in, but they also don't have to be cleaned like regular blinds. Like you don't have to dust them, which is like fantastic. So yeah. Yeah, I also wanted to work on my blog this weekend, but I didn't get that done. And I wanted to film a mail opening video, but I didn't get that done either. Maybe I can do that tonight after work. So anyway, I wanted to share with you my meal plan. So uh, last night we did have the um, chicken spaghetti, which actually turned out really good to me. It kind of tasted like, uh, you, you guys, have you guys ever gotten like chicken helper? It's like the hamburger helper, except it's like chicken. <laughs> It, it kind of tasted like that, except is there's obviously not all that processed crap in it. So basically it was just like the noodles, chicken broth, um, a cup of sour cream at the end. You could probably use light sour cream if you wanted to and chicken. And you can add whatever veggies you want. I went ahead and kept the broccoli separate. The original recipe calls for like mushrooms, onions, peppers. I didn't put those in there because I just figured like my kids would eat it better if I had the veggies on the side, which they really like the salad and the broccoli, so they ate that on the side, but I would totally recommend that recipe. And I know you guys are probably tired of me talking about these cookbooks, but <laughs> I have had this one for a while and I've never made anything out of it. And so I just kind of started cooking with it in the last couple weeks and I really like it. And then of course the budget one I got also. So I'll link those down below, not sponsored. Brittany Williams has no idea who I am, <laughs> but, um, Next week, I uh, or this week rather, I did this meal plan. So tonight on Monday, I'm gonna make BLTs. I have some bacon that I got from Costco. So I'll probably cook that up in the oven. Um, I did buy a loaf of sourdough bread. So this is funny, as I'm going through all of this, you know, like nutrition and like, you know, trying to healthify our food and reduce sugar and all that. So I was watching this video this weekend and this lady that like has basically been off of sugar for like two years and she's like, no, you shouldn't buy whole wheat bread, you should buy sourdough bread because it has like the, you know, active cultures in it and it's good for your gut and it doesn't have any sugar in it. And I'm just like, you know, it just like highlights the point to me that like there's no perfect diet and you're gonna get conflicting information like no matter <laughs> who you go to. So I did buy a loaf of sourdough bread. So that's what we're gonna have our BLTs on. And then I have a bunch of veggies cut up that I prepped. I have some um, like dill dip in the fridge that we'll probably have with that and then yeah, maybe like a fruit salad or something like that. Now, normally I would have made like BLTs and fries or like BLTs and chips or something like that, but since we're not like 
trying to do like multiple carbs at each meal we're just gonna do that Tuesday I want to try a recipe for Parmesan crusted chicken and then we'll have green beans with that so I'll film that that'll be in a what's for dinner video and then Wednesday I wanted to do the um, chorizo and potato tacos those are from a different cookbook that I have and I've made them on my channel before um, and then some stuffed poblano peppers so I made these once before, but basically you take poblano peppers and you kind of roast them in the oven and you just sprinkle a little bit of cheese on them and then you can put hot sauce on them and it's sort of kind of like a chile relleno like type of taste except it's not like breaded and fried so it's pretty like low carb. Um, but I'll show you guys that too. And then Thursday, I think I'm going to make a, um, a beef stew recipe out of this new Instant Loss cookbook that I got, I'm probably not gonna be able to find it now. But anyway, there's a beef stew recipe in here for the Instant Pot that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, it uses sweet potatoes. I might use regular potatoes since that's what I have on hand. And then there's also a recipe in here for focaccia that uses oat flour. I might make that with it, or I may just use my regular um, focaccia recipe, which is just with you know regular flour. I might substitute some whole wheat flour, no added sugar. And then Saturday, I think we're gonna do um, pork chops with roasted carrots and rice. We have a swim meet that day. Um, Friday night, we always have, I just skipped that. Friday night, we always have pizza and I am keeping that um, pizza night just because again, that's something that we always have and um, I'm not trying to, you know, say that we're never gonna eat pizza <laughs> ever again because who wants to live that kind of life and then Sunday is a Super Bowl um, so I don't have a meal quite prepared or you know planned for that yet but I will um, be filming that next weekend so you guys will see that in an upcoming video so overall I got a lot of stuff done this weekend but I also did relax quite a bit you guys always ask me when I relax I did sit on the couch for many periods of time this weekend, either mindlessly scrolling my phone or uh, watching SNL or other TV with Adam. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to check out Gabby Insurance. It's super easy to go to their website. It's just gabby.com slash Jen. You can put in your information and I actually got our quote back and they found several insurance companies that would save us uh, about $250 a year. So we'll definitely be um, looking into that. Make sure you check it out. I'll have the link down below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.